All right, so in this video now, I want to talk about our theology curriculum that we have laid out and planned for you at the Aquinas School for Theology and Philosophy online. And in this video, I'm just going to give you a whole, just a general bird's eye view of the subject of theology. So we're going to look, all the, look at all the different main subjects, all the main areas of theology. And, you know, these kind of bird's eye views, these uh, looking at the whole at a glance, these kinds of things are helpful so that you can see all the different parts and how they all fit together. So let's start at the top and you have a diagram. I'm going to place a diagram here. Um, looks like this, if you can see that. And you can download this and I would suggest that you do so because I'm not going to write every little detail on the board, but you can follow along with me. It makes it nice like that. Okay, so let's take theology here at the top. Theology, the science of God. So these are going to be the main divisions of theological science. And when we're talking about theology here. We're talking about the science of God. We're talking about the science of God and divine things based on supernatural revelation considered by the light of Christian faith. That is a nice little short and concise definition of theology. So we got kind of theology in general here. And the first division we want to make is right here. We're going to split this here and we're going to talk about speculative speculative you can almost you see the word spec the spectacles in there the the looking okay speculative theology this is a uh, knowledge just for knowledge sake just knowing for the sake of knowing not doing anything with that knowledge not having to carry out any any action just knowing for the sake of knowing okay and here we're going to talk about what we must believe about God concerning the truths He has revealed to us. So these are the things that we should just know for the sake of knowing. Okay, And that's contrasted with what we can call practical theology. I'll put that over here. Okay, So I'll put practical here. And for in practical, we're talking about practical knowledge. This is knowledge for the sake of action. So here we want to know things so we can go do something, all right? Over here, we just want to know for the sake of knowing. We just, just want to know, okay? So uh, when we're talking about practical theology then, as I have here in your chart, this is uh, things that we have to believe about God's revelation as it relates to, to human action, okay? This is the stuff we've got to know in order to do something with that knowledge, okay? so. This is a, how we have to respond to God's revelation in order to avoid sin and to practice virtue. Okay, that's, that falls under the practical theology side. And let me just take care of that section first because practical theology here is going to divide into what we call moral theology and ascetical theology. And you can kind of uh, dispute some of the divisions here. Some people divide them different ways. That's, where, that's the way we're dividing it here. When we're talking about moral theology here, we're talking about the study of human acts, the things that we do as the road to our, as the road to our supernatural end. These are the things that we have to do, we're obligated to do in order to get to heaven. So that all falls under the category of moral theology. Ascetical theology, on the other hand, this talks about things that we have to do that kind of go beyond matters of strict obligation. In other words, we're talking here about advancing in virtue, not just knowing about sin and avoiding it and all that stuff. We're going further than that now. We're going into how we advance in virtue, how we advance in Christian perfection, you see, going to this talks about how to how to attain a higher degree of sanctity. You see, not just avoiding mortal sin, not just avoiding venial sin, but beyond that, becoming holy 
in this life. Okay, so this is where we talk about advancing in virtue and avoiding imperfection, an extremely important area of theology. It's been called the science of the saints. It's also been called the science of happiness, okay, of, of beatitude. All right. So that's, that's where, that's kind of just in general. Again, this is a very general outline here, but that covers the practical side of theology. What I really want to get into in this video is the speculative side, okay? This is, what we, this is where we talk about dogmatic theology. Looks like this pen is uh, dying on me, so let me grab another one. Talking about dogmatic theology here. This is the study of God's revelation for the sake of knowing truths about Him. Remember, this is speculative, just knowing for the sake of knowing. And of course, God is the principal subject here. We're talking about God. We are studying God. But we make an important distinction here in dogmatic theology. Yes, we're studying God, but God can be studied in different ways, in different aspects, okay? First of all, we can talk about God, as I say in your, uh, in your diagram here, we can talk about God as considered in Himself, okay? God just studying, just God Himself. Okay, versus versus well, we can go over here and say God as considered in his external operations. You see, over here we're talking about God as just considered in himself, or God in terms of what he's done outside of himself, his external operations. I'll put this one over here. All right, so let me explain uh, this. I just, I just love this stuff. I, I just think it's so exciting. I think Catholic dogmatic theology um, is, is uh, it's kind of analogous to the Gothic cathedrals of the Middle Ages. These, these you know, just monumental achievements of, of human architecture. Well, dogmatic theology to me is like that in terms of the human mind. It's just, it's, it's, the, it's the highest level I think the human mind has ever reached. It's just, it's a joy to read and, and I love teaching it and I'm very passionate about it as you can tell probably. But let me just talk about uh, God as considered in Himself because we can think of this in two ways too as you see in your diagram. We can think of God as one, right, in the unity of his nature. We talk about God's unity all the time. I have a whole course here in the Aquinas School of Theology and Philosophy, I just finished it, it's coming up, uh, on the one true God. Right? This is what we're talking about, the one God. God as considered in the unity of his nature. That's one way to think about God in himself. And another way to think about God in himself is God as a trinity. God as a trinity of persons, de Deo Trino Secundum Personas. You see, just to help you kind of look at the Latin there. This is de Deo Uno uh, Secundum Naturam versus de Deo Trino Secundum Personas. God as considered as a trinity of persons. Two whole sections in St. Thomas's Summa on these different topics. There's a whole section on God as, as a, in his considered in his unity, and then of course there's a section on God as Trinity. So that kind of covers the parts of theology when we're thinking about, in terms of speculative theology, God as considered in himself. We're going to move over here now. All right? Now we can talk about all the different branches of theology when we think about God in terms of his external operations. So. I've got kind of a limited amount on my board here, so I'm not going to put everything on here, but let me just see if I can get it in. All right. So we're talking about God in terms of His external operations. The first thing we can think about, and I hope this isn't too low for you, is God as Creator. There's a, again, there's a whole section in Thomas Aquinas on God as the Creator, God's creation. Here we're talking about the creation of 
natural and supernatural orders. It covers things like the creation of the world and the fall of man, stuff like that. That's covered in this section of dogmatic theology. We can talk about God as Redeemer. That is one of his external operations, right? God as Redeemer. And here, of course, we are talking about things like Christology, you know, the person of Jesus Christ. Soteriology, right? The theology of the atonement for sin. And we talk about Mariology, that is the theology of the Blessed Mother. So all that would fall under God as Redeemer or De Verbo Incarnate. Okay. All right. Next one we can think of, think of next uh, you know, section of theology. We can talk about God as Sanctifier. Sorry, my writing is no good, but I'll do the best I can. God as Sanctifier. Here we are talking about grace. Whole sections in theology just on grace. Grace in different kinds of ways. We can talk about grace in terms of how it's invisible, and we could talk about grace in terms of how it's visible through the sacraments. All that would fall under this category here. And finally, the last section here under, under God as considered in His external operations, um, this is one of my favorite topics in theology, is God as consummator. God as consummator, all right? Very important here. Eschatology, the theology of the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. So, uh, as I've been saying in some of these other videos, this, is, this gives you, this kind of diagram, gives you a structure to theology. You can see how it follows just kind of a, a logical ordering. And that's important. As Thomas Aquinas says, you know, the wise man always orders. God is an orderer, and we should imitate God and order things too. That, that, that applies to a lot of things. We should order our lives. We should order our study. So I think this really helps when you think of, you know, you can just think of the theology in general and your mind just kind of, you know, just kind of scattered. This kind of thing helps you organize all that knowledge into this little uh, upside down tree. We call it a tree of porphyry in logic, but this helps you uh, understand the whole of theology at a glance. And these are some of the things we're going to be covering in our Aquinas School of Theology and Philosophy. We're going to be covering all this stuff. Okay, we're going to have, we have courses in all this stuff coming up. It's a lot of fun, and I really do look forward to teaching you.